All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we change our topic because many of you asked me actually about the same topic, and just today I got one more uh, request for the same topic. Uh, before we start, we promised last week that I'm going to give my book, The Quran and Science, which is translated into the Indonesian language today. But uh, uh, the person who was supposed to read it uh, did not finish reading the book yet. So today we ask another person to do the job and uh, you know actually uh, the same person who is the translator is the one supposedly you know like would help in that but we could not reach out but anyway uh, we will delay the delivery of this new book just a few days from now and when the the person who was helping finish trans uh, the reading to just to be sure that it's the translation is good and nothing there's no mistakes um, we uh, will post around. So just I apologize for that. And with this, we start our topic for today. I hope my voice is coming clear. And please let us invite Muslims to join us in this conversation. And please maintain your language and don't uh, speak uh, bad or mouth, bad mouth people. You know, uh, yesterday uh, somebody posted... Uh, uh, comments says a Christian prince you call Muslims Abdul Abdul is not a name calling Abdul This is what the Muslim they believe they are Abdul Abdul is a word coming from Abdullah which means the slave of Allah So only naive people think that when you say Abdul you are insulting. That's because you are ignorant secondly when somebody says to me uh, Sometime you say the word donkey. I'm just using their book because the Quran says that this the similarity speaking about the Christians and the Jews those who carry the book and in this case it was the Torah is the same as donkeys so I'm not calling names I'm just using something they believe in again it's your ignorance uh, everything I say everything I use is coming from their religion the likeness of those who entrusted with the law of Moses yet apply is not as likeness of an ass carrying a book. So what we see every day that people carry books, but they are the same as the Quran says. I agree with that. And that including the scholars of Islam who yet they claim to be scholars, but they cannot explain a simple verse in the Quran. So they carry books and they make books, but they cannot explain the books. And they make explanation which make you more confused after the explanation from before the explanation. So those who give us a lecture and about how to speak, you know, we attack the topic, not the person. I do not know people I'm talking to. I never met any of them. So there's nothing here personal. We are here attacking the topic, not the person. And the Bible says, <clears throat> Jesus said, you know, many places, he called them even the sons of snakes. I did not call anyone sons of snakes unless you are playing like a snake so uh, very you know very unique people speak here and sometimes you see I, today I disabled the chat because many they are like kids one of them is speaking about his girlfriend the other one is talking about eating chocolate the other one here this is a place for adult and we want people here to be joining for a reason not to chat this is not a coffee shop the chat have to be with the topic, otherwise go to the front place. Now, the question I'm going to show you actually some of without showing the name of the person who sent me uh, uh, his comment uh, in Skype. So I will show you his comment in Skype. He sent it to me without showing his name. Actually, there's no name anyway. I mean, it's just a letter. Uh, the la is a from uh, which Allah is diverted from. Not sure if you've seen a video disputing that argument made by a Christian. You're sticking by the theory come from la. I mean, I don't know who is this Christian, but let me tell you the bad news. The bad news is that I can show you now a bishop in the Middle East saying that we have the same God. Hypocrisy. They live between the Muslims and they have fear. They don't dare to say this is not our God. So if somebody says something, doesn't mean it's true. That is the truth. And the hypocrisy reached farther than that. 
as an example in the Arabic translation and in the, even in the Indonesian translation they put the word Allah in their Bible translation but there is no Allah in the Bible that because they are hypocrite and the translators are liars and actually the one who translated the Arabic uh, Bible one of them is a Muslim his last name is Aitani he is a very Muslim Sunni very well-known family as a Muslim Sunni sheikhs so imagine they invited the sheikh to translate the Bible with them why because they are they have a fear what if tomorrow we publish the Bible with this translation and they say, hey, why well, you are saying that there, they will kill us. So they brought a Muslim to translate the Bible with them. Do you see what fear can do? And they, those hypocrite Christians, they hope if we put the word Allah in the translation, the Muslims will stop doing what they do again against us. But here we go. You put Allah, you don't put Allah. It doesn't matter. And not only that, in, uh, in some Islamic country, their rule, that Christians cannot use the word Allah in their churches. Let me show you the news actually. And this is by the court, which means if you use it, you go to jail. So even the Muslims, they agree that Christians, they have no right to use this word. So why Christians they use this word? The answer is very simple. Those are a bunch of hypocrite or they are forced to. Or they are naive, they don't know. Malaysia court rules non-Muslims cannot use Allah. Allah just for Muslims. <laughs> so who is this Christian who told you that Allah have nothing to do? This is stupid, and let me show you how. And then, then uh, this uh, gentleman, I don't know if it's a lady or a guy, he said, "If Lah come from the Egyptian pagan moon God, the term Yah from which Yahweh is diverted uh, also come from the same pagan moon God." That's because I don't want to say the word is stupid, but what you just said is extremely stupid because Yahweh is not Yah as you claim. Let us go to the Bible and you will see that you are ignorant again. This is the Bible. I'm going to put it in the screen. Give me a second. When people they say Yahweh, they are shorting it, but it's not really Yahweh. As you write it and Elohim said into Moshe Moshe this is the name it's not Musa's Ehe Yah Ashir Ehe Yah so you see that here this is not the God of the Egyptian it's totally different sentence totally different it's not even a name it's not even a name Musa says what I will tell them tell them I am that's what it says I am the one who exists so you are missing things up, mixing things up, making your own salad because some stupid idiot, they say, oh, Yahweh is coming from the Egyptian moon god. That is your fallacy. Because here is not even a name of a god. It's just a sentence. It's different language. As an example, in Arabic, I don't want to use bad language, but in Arabic, you know, in English, you say kiss. In English, you say kiss. In Arabic, that word is the same word used for the private part of the women. So what you want to do now, you take the word kiss in English and you say, ah. When an American, he says, kiss me, he is saying, give me a, a private part. This is what you are doing. It is totally different language, totally different meaning, and it is not a name. As many they think the whole Bible never saw a name of, of God as you see it's I am who I am there's no name Elohim is not a name the Creator is not a name there's no name for God in the Bible never so this is how God he says to Moses I am the one who I am, which means I am the one who exists by myself. <coughs>
And the reason there is no name, because there is no name can describe God. There is no name can explain God. <coughs> uh, let me get some water. If you go down a little bit, you will see it says, and Elohim said, okay, they are calling him Elohim, but Elohim does not mean it's, an, it's not a name. Shaddadi, you know, there's many words in, 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 the, in the Hebrew speaking, or let us say uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a title to God, but they are not names. Hashem, Shaddadi, Elohim, uh, 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 Yahweh, you know, but this is not, none of them is a name. So it's a foolishness to say, oh, oh, the Egyptian have a close word to it. But this is not, because at the end of the day, it's not only close word in the pronunciation, it is the meaning. So if it's here coming as you claim, the same as it's coming in the Egyptian, then you are right. If not, it's not. As simple as that. If you go there here, look, in just in this one verse, and this is the or the Orthodox Jews Bible. Look how many times. Look at this. Ehe ye Hashir eh ye I am who I am, and then Elohim, and then Hashem. But none of those are the names. The Jews always avoid to give God a name because it is disrespectful to give him a name, for he gave no himself none. And there's no name can describe his glory and no name can tell you about him all of those are kind of attribute or title so it's your ignorance to think that they are similar in the same time if we go back to the to Allah if you notice with me here in the Hebrew you will see it says ill now maybe somebody will say to me well ill is a word mean God even used by the pagan this is true but il is not a name it's just a word mean God and the Hebrew they are born of the Aramaic so it's very normal that the language coming from a language before it so il is a word mean God Elohim Elohim il is a word mean God and in the old days in the ancient Hebrew the word il was al which means it was not Elohim it was Elohim you see how language change and that is kept in the Islamic religion as an example if we go and look at the names of Allah in Arabic we have the letter a L letter a L in Arabic is equal to the the but this is the language today. The A L. This is in the language today. But where the names is coming from is coming from the ancient Aramaic, which is A L, which is equal to God. If you look at the, all the names of the one they call him God, Muslims they give him, they say those are attribute. You see, Allah is not there, you know. In this list now, Allah, we see Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Malik, Al Quddus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhaimin, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabbir, Al Khaliq, Al Bari, etc. So here you will notice the first two letters in every word is A L. Many naive people do not know that A L here is not the; it is God Rahman, God Rahim, God Malik. God could do so. See, E L, do you see the E L? Al, here by the way, this is false. They say Al Ar Rahim because this is how it's pronounced, but the fact it is Al Rahim, Al, Al Rahman, Al Aziz, Al Muhaymin, etc. Al is a word mean God. Now let us go to the Quran. Now we learn that Al is a word. Mean God, and this is goes for the Hebrew, even in the Hebrew, Israel was not Israel, Israel was Israel. Israel is not Israel, Mikael is not Mikael, Jibreel is not Jibreel, it is Jibreel, Mikael, Israel. 
Now, if we go in the Quran, we go to the first verse in the Quran to make it easy. The first verse, not the last verse. Not we do not need to search. <clears throat> All right. Chapter one in the Quran. Read with me and tell me what's happening here. <clears throat> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Okay, let us zoom a little bit more so we can make it more clear. Do you notice that the two words Allah are different between the first verse and the second verse? Look with me carefully. Here we have letter A. Here we don't have it. It's gone. You cannot take a letter out of a name. You cannot. Like I name my name is a Christian, you cannot take the C. That's it. Christian is a Christian. So why the letter A is not exist in the second verse? Both of them it says Allah. But the second one it says Alhamdulillah. Li la. The first one pronounced as Allah. The second one, it says Li La. Okay, so what we have now? Let us uh, make it simple. Here we have Allah. In the first verse. And in the second verse, we have Li. Lah. How is that? Very simple. Because the first two letters are not part of the word. So here they exchange Allah by Li. Li mean two. Al in the first word mean God. The first one we see in the screen, it's a word mean God. So here when we say Al, they are saying God La. Okay. If it's part of the name, we cannot take it off. That's it. It should appear in the second verse as Allah too, but it does not. Why? Because it's not part of the word. We can take it off. It's just a word meaning God before La. That will make him God La. In the second sentence, it says Alhamdu, which means thanks. Lila. Li mean two. La is the name. So here we confirm that this is a really a name. It's not a similar name for the moon god. It is a name. Now let us see if it's the moon god or not. Because maybe it's the same like, as I said, like the word kiss in English. It means dirty word in Arabic. Maybe it's just a coincidence. You never know. No, we can not prove that easy. Maybe you forgot that the God of Islam have many stories and the Quran support those stories. Isn't it the Quran says that Allah he have three daughters and this is what the Arab believe Allah to al -Uzza. Let us go and see the daughters of Allah. You see here, we are not talking about a theory as you claim, stuck with your theory. That's stupid of you to say. Because the Quran confirmed that it is true. The Arab, they believe that there is a God, his name is Allah, and he have daughter are Al-Lat and Al-Uzza. Do you see the Al? They are goddess. This is what Al mean. Al-Lat. Did you ask yourself how Allah got daughters? Okay, who is the wife of Allah? Shouldn't you ask yourself such a question? Let us say that the word Allah has nothing to do with the moon God. It is not the moon God. It is something totally different. Okay, how in the world 
the Arab they come that there is a goddess their name is Al Lat Al Uzza and you see this is the Muslim translation and they are the one who break it down for you not me do you see it this is the Muslim breakdown not me the Muslims think I'm very thankful thank you Muslims helping me Al Lat Al Uzza who are they those Al Lat and Al Uzza they are goddess and they are daughters of Allah and the third one is Manat and the reason they don't have Al before it because supposedly this is the goddess of death so here we need to ask ourselves okay who is if we go and search right now in the mythology of religion who is the God who have three daughters and their name is Allah and al Uzza and Manat. You will find that it is the moon god. Do a little search in, little, in the stupid Google, and the stupid Google will be smarter than you. So, when you say it's a theory, that is a false fiction statement of you because it's not a theory. The Arab they worship him always as God who have daughters, and he is the moon god. Somebody will say to you, like uh, James White. He said, well, the Quran says don't worship the moon. The moon God worship is not worshiping the moon, you idiot. Moon is like there, every every plant, uh, planet, sorry, or a star has God in control. So the moon God, it's not really the moon. They did not really worship the moon. They worship the God of the moon. They worship the God of the Sun so there's a Sun God and there's a moon God if we go back we will find that according to the Quran not to me unless you will say the Quran is false that Abraham he worshiped the Sun and he called it Akbar he worship what the Sun This is the story of Abraham. Abraham, according to the Quran, not to me, is a star worshiper. He was exchanging worship in his stars. One by one. When the night grow, when the night came, okay, what happened to Abraham? Don't text me guys when I am going live unless it's necessary. So Abraham, when the night come, he said, after he saw a star, this is my Lord. Has a Rabbi. A Rabbi is not an Arabic word. A Rabbi is coming from the Aramaic. It's used by the Hebrew too. That's why we say Rabbi. This is my Lord, but when his, it said, he said, I love not these that set. That's stupid to say, actually. The story here is stupid. And then, when he saw the moon uprising, he explained, this is my Lord. So he worshipped the moon, thinking about the moon as God. Then, when the moon go astray, You know, I just told them I'm live and still texting me. I mean, I don't know what to say. When he saw the moon uprising, he explained, this is my Lord, which means Abraham, he worshipped the moon. Okay, forget about that. But who is the most convincing for Abraham? It is the sun. When he saw the sun uprising, he cried, This is my Lord, this is Akbar. Not a greater. The word here is used, Akbar. And here we go, this is the Arabic word. Haza Akbar. Qala Akbar. 
and when the sun goes he said ah <laughs> i'm not going to worship the one who disappear which is stupid because allah never appeared to abraham anyway so if you believe in something because it appear and disappear at least the sun appear once and twice and three and none stop appearing allah never appear to you and then suddenly he said I have turned my face toward him who created the heaven and the earth, but he did not tell us who him, who is this guy. Suddenly he knows Allah. How this happened, we don't know. How this has happened, we don't know. So the story here confirmed to us that Abraham was a Sabian. Is what? Sabian. What Sabian are? Sabians are stars worshippers. If we go here, this is a Muslim book published in Iran. And they are defending Islam in this book. I mean, Islam is an amazing religion. It is made by Al Huda organization to guide people into Islam. And look what they are saying the Sabians are war, they are star worshipper. Actually, we just showed you another Muslim site a few days ago, if you remember saying the same Sabians are stars worshippers so it's confirmed that Abraham was a Sabian and he was a star worshippers and the Sabians are star worshippers and this is all is coming from Islamic resource not from a Christian prince then we go to the Quran we will find something very funny and very stupid Allah in the Quran saying that the Sabians they will go to heaven And then the Muslim to solve this problem, they say, oh, there's two kinds of Sabi and that's false. What is the book of the Sabian which make them believing in a God, which is the same as the God of the Jews and the Christians? They have a book, it's called Kenza Rabba, and this is actually, the original of it is not exist. This is something they made in you. Kenza Rabba, I have it. And I read it all from cover to cover, two books actually. In the Ladina Amanu, well, Ladina Hadu, one Nasara, was Sabi Ina, women Amana Bilahi, or Biliomil Akher. Those who they are Jews and the Nasara, suppose this has been the Christians. Which is false, and asabiin, and whoever believe in Allah and the last day and do good deeds, they will have good, you know, like their wages by Allah, and there's no fear for them. They will go to heaven. Okay, hold on. How the Sabians will go to heaven? How the Sabians became between the Christians and the Jews? The Sabian, do you know what the Sabian believe? The Sabian in their books, and I can show you even the, the, their book, say, they say that Adonai, the God of the Jews, he is the devil. Which means the God of the Christians and the God of the Jews for the Sabian is the devil. So Muhammad, he inserted the Sabian to go to heaven. At this moment, Muhammad, he was even called Sabian. If we go to the hadith, let me try to find the hadith for you, where the Arab called Muhammad Sabian, and Muhammad did not complain about it. He did not say no. I will try to find the hadith. Let us see if we can find it. Um, here we go. Muhammad, he sent his men to find water. They were traveling in the desert and they want to find water so they saw a woman and they saw with her waters they said to her where you brought this water from 
uh, she told him is not far from here etc and then they said to her uh, they said to her, who are you like you know the, who are those men who are you they said we are the men of Allah Apostle she said do you mean the man who is called Sabi'i do you see it what he was called Sabi'i he's a Sabian Is the image coming clear, guys? Can you read it clear? Okay, so what people call him? A Sabi. And they put between two brackets the new religion. That's false. This is not really what it's meant. A Sabi is a Sabi, the Sabian. If this is a new religion, then how Muhammad he says, and the Sabian. They have no because if the Sabian is the Muslims, then this is stupid. Muhammad in the Quran he called them the Sabian, so the word Sabian cannot be the new religion. So Muhammad is a Sabian, and we confirm already that Sabian is what stars worshippers from Muslim books. So Muhammad in the beginning he was a Sabian. And then he, when he moved to live between the Jews, he played like a Jew. Uh, Muhammad is like Obama. With the Jews, he's a Jew. With the atheists, he's an atheist. With the gays, he's a gay. With the with the with the Muslim, he's a Muslim. Muhammad have no skin, have no color. He have no religion. He have nothing. Muhammad is just a fraud. Wherever he go, he is one of them. When he sit with the Jews, he says he he said, "Bring me the Torah." They brought the Torah. He says, "I believe in thee." And the one who sent thee but later he says the Torah or he claimed that the Torah they play with it so how he say I believe in thee he is a hypocrite man he have no God he have no religion he have no ethic he have no value he is just a fraud now if this is all is alone is not enough to prove to you that Muhammad is worshiping the god of the moon then you need to explain to me the following the pagan before the arab they kiss a black stone and that black stone is a stone which is resembled the women private part which is resembling the god of fertility which is the moon god if we go in the hadith, we will find the following. Let us find it. All right. Let us say that Muhammad had nothing to do with the pagan before him. He is just a person who believe in the same God of Abraham, blah, 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 blah. Then we find Muhammad saying and doing that touching a black stone and the Yemeni corner erases sin. Is that the maid of a Christian prince or this is uh, what the Muslims believe the Muslims until now they kiss the black stone and they touch it and they cry when they touch it <laughs> forgive me and not only that Muhammad he claimed that the black stone was whiter than milk and then the sin of mankind made it black how that can be because Muhammad is a follower of a cult which is believed that you get black by committing sin. The reason for people to be black is committing sin according to Islam. 
if you remember Muhammad he made a hadith uh, let me try to find it <clears throat> if somebody have it posted in or, already in the where Muhammad he hit the shoulder of Adam and from the left shoulder he created the black people and he decided they will go to hell and from the right shoulder he hit it and he created the white people and they will go to heaven because Islam is based on racism it's a cult with no respect whatsoever with no value uh, let me see if I can find the hadith um If somebody, if somebody have it, please post the link. Okay, here we go. Somebody post it for us. Thank you, uh, Phil. <clears throat> Let us see if we can open it. Uh, for some reason, it's not opening with me here. Let me see. Here we go. We have it open. It opened with Firefox, not with uh, uh, Google. Narrated Allah Messenger said, Adam, when he, uh, Allah created Adam, when he had to create him, he struck his right shoulder and there emitted from it white offspring, as if it were white ants. He struck his left shoulder and there emitted from it the black of spring as if it were circle then he said to those who they have been emitted from the right shoulder which means the white for paradise and I do not mind and then he said to those who emitted from the left shoulder they are for hell and I don't mind that is a pagan practice and pagan belief. Those, the the you know those who created this religion, they are white people, and they believe that being a black is because you are you did something wrong, you did something bad. So Muhammad, as a fraud, he took this false belief because there's no difference between the black and white. There's white criminals, there's black criminals, there's white good people, there's Asian good people, there's bad people, there's everywhere. This is color have nothing to do with this. But as you see, Muhammad saying that Allah, he decided that those who they are black will go to hell and those who they are white, they will go to heaven. This is from the belief of the Sabians. Being having such a color for them it's a it's a curse you are punished so Muhammad is nothing but a fraud and he is a pagan again believing in stones believing in false fictions and he was a Sabian and Muhammad went farther to believe that the stones can erase your sin why because he is just copying the belief before him is not coming with something new. This is not the new religion. The Kaaba is from before. The black stone is from before. And the Arab, they used to kiss it and they used to lick it and they used to go totally naked around the Kaaba. Now, why they are going naked? Because they are worshiping the moon god. What does that mean? The black stone was not just a stone. It was the machine of fertility. It is God tool on earth. If you want to have fertility, if you are a female, you are not getting a child, you have to go and walk around the Kaaba totally naked. And then 
you touch the black stone after touching your private part when you are in your period so your hand will be full of a blood and then you place your hand in the front or inside the black stone pray into Allah and then you will have a baby did you ask yourself why the Arab are going around the Kaaba naked what is that what is the religion there what is religion which is required to go naked who are those people who go naked and the most funny thing is that Muhammad he did not forbid people to go naked until the last year of his life so Muhammad now he took control of the Kaaba but yet he don't have a problem with people going naked around the Kaaba in the chapter of the Tawbah which is the last chapter in the Quran by revelation supposedly Muhammad he says the idolaters they cannot go around the Kaaba no more. We have it exclusive now for us. And then nobody go around the Kaaba naked no more. So Muhammad he did not find that the going naked around the house of Allah is an insult to Islam. No, and he was enjoying it. Actually, if you have my book Six and Allah, you will find that Muhammad. The reason for him to forbid people from going naked because he saw a woman and she was going naked and he wanted to marry her. He wanted to be not to marry her, to sleep with her. He wanted her to be her his uh, his uh, you know joy. She was going around the Kaaba singing a song, and she is totally naked. And the story in my book. So now we need to ask ourselves many questions. People going around the Kaaba naked, what is that religion? That is the moon god religion. Now we go to different place. We are not done. I mean, there is endless proofs. Muhammad, he saw a bunch of genie, and those genie, they converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. They converted to Islam. Yes, brother. And guess what? Those genie, they are coming from Al Mosul in Iraq. They are coming from the territory of Haran, the Sabian. Those are Sabi and genie. They are Muslims already, but now they believe in the Quran, they believe in Allah. According to the story in front of us, and this is the interpretation of Al Qurtubi, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Muhammad he met with the twelve thousand genie, which is a stupid story. Only kids can believe in such a story. And then he did recite for them the Quran. Some interpretation they say they were nine. Doesn't matter what how many they are. But they are coming from Iraq, from the Sabian territory. And they, when they heard the Quran, they say, This is the Prophet of Allah, which we are waiting for, and this is the book of Allah. If we go in the Quran, where we can find this? There's a chapter, it's called the chapter of genie in the Quran, chapter number 72. And the Muslim, they fear this chapter a lot. Genie, <laughs> fictions, and cave time belief. Say, O Muhammad, it is revealed into me that a company of the jinn gave ear and they said, Lu, we have heard marvelous Quran. The genie are waiting for Muhammad too. And they announce that Muhammad must be the prophet. And they say, which guide us into righteousness. So believe in it. And we ascribe no partner to our Lord. Who is your Lord? The Lord of the genie.
then the crazy stories continue Uh, anyone have a question? Anyone have a question? Nobody. Okay. If we if we try to find, uh, let me see if I can find you the reference. <clears throat> you know, uh, we are limited sometime because not everything we want is translated to English the message of Allah said the black stone descended from the paradise and it was more white than milk and then it was blackened by the sin of the children of Adam so sin make white black that is the conclusion sin make white black however we have a solution believe in Muhammad that will make you white how we find that if we go in the Quran we find this in many places actually this is just one verse here in the D, there's no sum. This is a false translation. There's no sum. When faces will be whitened and faces will be blackened. So Muhammad, not only he is saying that sin make you black, Muhammad have a solution. If you convert to my religion, even if you are black now, Allah will make you white again. If you go to chapter 27, Verse number 82. There's a beast, it's called a Jassasa. This beast is going to come from the ground. And this is again from the belief of the pagan, the moon worshippers, that the moon god will send a beast. And that beast is going to teach that you should worship this God, which is called in chapter 36, Yasin. Yasin. Who is Yasin? The moon God. Go right now and search. <laughs> and the funny, the Muslim, they say to you, Allah knows best what he meant by that. Yeah, is a word meaning God. Sin is the moon God. It's just another name. There's many names for the moon God. La, sin, even some they believe the Baal himself is the moon God. So when you say to me, you have a theory, that is very stupid. This is not a theory. Have you ever heard of a God? He says something. And why why yes, sin is exist there? I mean, what's the point of this? The Muslim, because of their confusion, some they say, Oh, this is sin, yes, sin is a mean a mean a human. What mean human? In which language? They say Aramaic. If we change the interpretation from Ajalain to Ibn Abbas, I'm just using I'm limited here with the English translation. You want Translate it in English. And from the narration of the authority of Ibn Abbas, he said, upon the interpretation saying, the creator glorify his, uh, 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 glorified is mentioned, Yasin. Yasin, he says, 
Yes, in all human being in the Syriac language. Do you see it? So they admitted this is Syriac language, but they are saying that it's mean human. That's stupid. You can go and, and, and search it. What uh, they are seeing a human. This is false. Yeah, is a word mean God in the Syriac, and sin is the moon God. So the Muslim, they're trying to find out, okay, what does this mean? They agree that this is something they copy from the Sabian. Sin is the moon god. Every territory they have the moon god, they worship the moon god. There's two groups in the world at that time. Let us say bigger group. Some they worship the sun god, which is in Europe, because they have cold water there, and some who worship the moon god because he is the nice god who uh, bring romance. He's not the one who killed the grass, bring a dry weather where our cattle will die from from uh, suffer from uh, thirst. So those who live in Europe or in cold area, they worship the sun god. The Muslims themselves, they say to you, do you know that the Christians, they pray in Sunday? Do you know why it's called Sunday? Because this is, was a pagan day. So for us, we are replaced worshiping the sun by worshiping the true God. It was called sun day. So worshiping the sun and worshiping the moon was two major religion. And we showed you in the Quran how Abraham, he worshiped the sun and he called it Akbar. And I believe strongly that when Muhammad, he says Allahu Akbar, he is merging between the two gods, the God Akbar and the God of the moon. Make them one God. If you ask a Muslim, what do you believe? He says to you, Tawheed. Do you know what Tawheed means? Tawheed mean unification. So how Allah is one, but you believe in Tawheed. Do you understand me, guys? If you believe in oneness of God, you don't believe in Tawheed. It's a stupid statement. Tawheed in Arabic mean unification, to unite things. If Allah is one, how you can believe in Tawheed? Are we following people? Anyone don't understand? If you believe in Tawheed, you are not a Muslim. Because Tawheed means unification. How you unify the one? The Muslim, they say to you, I'm going to show you a verse the Muslim always use. They say always to you this verse. Which again prove that Islam is nothing but a Sabi and cult. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. A Samad is an Aramaic word. Ahad is an Aramaic word. You notice here, if we take this word Ahad, and look how the fiction and the lies appear. Anyone notice where the word appear here in the in the in the screen in Arabic? Who notice where where, where the word appear again in the same chapter? Anyone notice? This is the word Ahad. You, you, you don't need to speak Arabic. Look, just look look at the at the how the word look like. Tell me, do you see it in other location? The same word? Does it appear again? What do you think? In the same verse. The same chapter. This is the word Ahad. Where is the word Ahad appear again? Anyone see it? Here. Do you see it? But look, the Muslim here translate the word Ahad. Allah is the one. That's false. Look what they translate the word Ahad here. And none compare to him. They translate that Ahad is none. That's false translation. Let us change the translator just to show you the hypocrisy and the deception they used when they translate. This is the translation of uh, Bigtad. Let us see uh, uh, Yusuf Ali. Here he said none too. Let us see another translator. 
هلالي انخان all of them they are translating the word ahad as none but let's let us see how we can get them busted shall we I will copy the word ahad in the front of your eyes copy and I will paste it in the translate in the in the search engine of the Quran in the front of your eyes here we go the same exact word and let us see how the translation change all those verses showing the word ahad I will choose a verse which is a small short so it's easy to figure out let us see here we go chapter 20 chapter 2 verse number 285 it says here okay translation and we do not distinguish between any you see what ahad is any of ahad does not mean one ahad mean one of do you see it the same word appeared tens of time in the Quran and all the translation it's coming as one off one off one off only in that verse they play the dirty game chapter 3 verse 153 read it one off Paid no head to anyone, one of anyone here is none of anyone, which means one of many. But he is here saying none, none of them, anyone. He did not do to that to anyone. So I had to have nothing to do with the word one, it's a false fiction lie. The word wahid is one. Ahad is one off. And all the Quran proved me right. From the first page to the last page. All those verses we see in the front of us saying the same. Chapter 9, verse number 84. Translation. And never Muhammad pray to one of them. This is Ahad. You see it? This is Ahad, one off. So if Allah, Allah saying, say he is one off. He's not saying he is one. If we go back to the verse, just to, to, to love more, it says he is a Samad. A Samad is a collection. You can ask anyone who speak Arabic, Arabic, ask him, do your child have a Masmuda? Masmuda is or uh, uh, like you know where you collect money like the, you make it uh, like uh, something from uh, uh, mud and you make a hole in it you dry it and then you collect your coins inside and then this is your saving so that for kids they do it in the, like in many places so you put your money there so you guarantee you will not take it unless you will break that thing and that thing costs you good money to make it so this is what some would mean it's a collective it's a collection of things. So how Allah he is one, it's what the verse saying, Allah is one of collection, not one God. And we are not done, are we? We are not. Look at this. Allah in the Quran, he said, additional that he have no children. Allah I don't have a children. The daughter of Allah, Allah don't like them. And look at the stupid statement in the Quran about the daughters of Allah. <clears throat> Why Allah he don't like to have daughters? You will not believe the stupid verse in front of you. Allah said to the Arab, Ha, 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 
or he Allah he have only daughters and you have sons <laughs> so Muhammad dislike that God Allah he have daughters only this is showing you that Muhammad is the one who is a revolutionary against women he was the first of the Arab to hate women so the Arab they used to worship women it's in the front of you Allah and al Uzza and Manat three women they are their goddess Muhammad God according to Muhammad he reject that he's saying what you for you the boys and for me the girls have you ever heard of a stupid logic Imagine you are saying that a hey, Christian prince you have daughters and then I say to you no no hello hello So what you take the daughters you give me the daughters you take the boys that is the logic of the God of Islam In different verse Muhammad he claim That they made even the angels females And the funny Muhammad he says, oh the Arab when they hear that they have a daughter giving uh, the wife giving daughter, uh, birth for a daughter, they get upset, and their their face turn black. They have a they have a supposedly a bad day, but this is again a racist comment. But he is the one is complaining. He is saying what for you the male and for me the female. If you go just a few verses down, just to show you how Muhammad he get himself busted. The same chapter, chapter forty-three, verse. We are reading verse number seventeen. We go just a little bit, chapter nineteen. And they make the angels who themselves are slaves to the most beneficent Allah females. So how the Arab they get upset from having a female daughter, yet they are worshiping angels. They are females. Do you understand guys as you see the Arab are not against women Muhammad he is the maniac who start speaking against women yesterday we made a video you can go watch it Muhammad he called women dogs he called them filthy he called them the most uh, inhabitant of the of, of the hellfire they called them not a uh, half a brain he called them they have deficiency in their brain and their religion I mean all kind of things There's a guy he says you want to debate me. Why you don't call me, my friend? You want to debate me by what? Call me. You stay in the text saying I want to debate you, and I'm going to expose you. Call me. You are a hero, but yet you don't want to call us. So how you will expose me? We need you, my friend. Allah need you. Allah Himself, He need you. Isn't it the Quran says, "Qatiluhum yu'adhibuhum Allahu bi'aidikum"? Hmm? Your God, Allah, is in disability. He cannot fight me. So He asked the Muslims to fight me. That is the pagan God. Can Allah punish me? No. So he asked the Muslims to punish those who are against Allah. Fight against them. Kill them. So that Allah will punish them by your hands. Do you see it? Allah cannot punish anyone. He need a bunch of terrorists to go after somebody and they kill him and this is the punishment of Allah. Allah is a fake God. is a potato God. Fiction God, he cannot do anything by himself. 
He needs Osama bin Laden so he can punish you. Which means Osama bin Laden is more powerful than Allah. Now who is there still he don't believe that Allah is the moon God? Ah, I forgot to mention this one too. I mean, there's many. Who is the one in control? It's God. And God is telling us that the moon, he have houses. And the moon we have measured for it, mansions. Mansions? Yeah, this is what the Sabian they believe. The Sabian, the Muslims, they share one thing. The same God. They have the same fast in Ramadan. The Sabi and they fast in a city and they receive the new moon in the new city. This is exactly Islam. The Muslims, they fast when they see the moon. But why the moon? I mean, and why it have to be the crescent moon? If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. And here you will see how many fast translation you will witness. The month of Ramadan, which was revealed the Quran. This is the first lie. The month of Ramadan is not exist. It is Shaharu Ramadan. The word Shahar, even in Hebrew, mean moon. So the moon of Ramadan, in which was revealed the Quran, it's the moon of Ramadan where the Quran is revealed. And then what? And then whoever of you sight the crescent moon. Do you see it? So when the rituals of Islam is started with fast, fasting, by sighting the crescent moon. And what is the month of Ramadan? It is the moon of Ramadan. Okay, Islam have nothing to do with moon God. Islam have nothing to do, etc. Okay, but now the most important thing is in Islam is based on the moon. We have a moon sign in the top of the mosque. We fast by seeing the crescent moon. And we have to sight the moon. It's not just a calculation of the day and we fast. No, we have to sight. So whoever of you witness sight the moon fast. Do you see it? The word shahar is not a word now, is in the, in the Arabic language today. The word shahar means month. This is true. But the word shahar is a moon. Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to call us so we can have a good conversation? Anyone? Now the moon God, Allah, he have a funny uh, build. The Muslim, they say to us, Allah is not a man, but the fact this is a lie. Allah is a man, but he have a deficiency. Allah have two hands and both of them they are in the right side. Why Allah have two hands? Any Muslim do have an answer for that? If Allah is the God, the superior, he do not need hands. The Quran says that Allah, he built everything by his hands. Is it literally? You go on, you will see the Muslim scholars saying, yes, hand is a hand. 
power is qudra so allah he have two hands and both of them they are right hands that how the arab they imagine the moon god he is a god with two hands every hand have five fingers and both of them are right hands. Why they are right hands? Because from the left hand, according to Muhammad, if you remember, he created the evil. And because Muhammad is a racist, filthy racist, he said that the black people created from the left hand. Do you see it? This is not my statement. This is Muhammad saying that. For sure, we as a Christian, we don't believe in such a garbage. Black people, there is... They are, they are they are wonderful there's bad and good everywhere so Allah have two right hands because from the right hands is the white people and the white people in Islam are the good ones and here we go back to remember something we did not mention according to the Quran we mentioned to you that there is a beast will come right it's called a Jassasa. But we did not tell you the whole story. In chapter 3, verse number 106, it says the day where Allah, he will make faces black and faces white. But there is no explanation here. If we go to Ibn Kathir, We go to chapter 27. Verse number 82. And again, this is Ibn Kathir, not Christian Prince saying that. Because the Muslim, they say to you, oh, he's lying. You see, everything I say, it's I'm, I'm showing it in the screen. Muhammad, he claimed that there's 10 miracles. They will, the, the, the judgment day will not happen unless they, those things happen. And endorsed by the way this prophecy proven Muhammad to be a false prophet because according to Muhammad this is the orders of the Sun of the things will happen the Sun will appear from the West and why Muhammad saying the Sun will appear from the West because Muhammad he believed that the Sun every day travel from the East to the West every day to pay a tribute to the moon God and go under the throne of the moon here you will notice Muhammad saying the following a beast will emerge from the earth and this is Quran now interpretation and with it will be the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon Muslims believe in the ring of Hori Putter that there's a ring was with Solomon and he was controlling all mankind and genie the whole world is under his control by a ring magical ring and this beast will strike the nose of the disbeliever with the staff and will make the face of the believer uh, bright with the ring actually it's not bright it's white and later we will show you and the same with the staff of Moses and he will make him a black let us read here together it will strike the nose of the believer, this believer, with the ring, and it will make his face believer bright with the staff until the people will gather together. They will say one to another, Oh, believer, this believer, which means people will recognize each other from their face, their color. You, If you are a ba bad person, Allah will make you black. If you are a good person, Allah will make you white. Now here, you see, even though they are saying, uh, make you bright, but look, the liar translator he could not hide it there will be no believer left without making a white spot in his face which will spread until his face is shining white and this is why the Muslims they love the moon because the moon is white there's a video of a shaykh is a crying that a guy he went and when he was, was walking at night, he looked at the moon. He saw the Prophet. 
He look at the moon and he look at the prophet. He look at the moon and he look at the prophet. He look at the moon. And he watch it. You will die laughing. I wish I can play it. And there's a music in the background. And this guy is so emotional. The guy, he look at the moon. He look at the prophet. He look at the moon. He look at the prophet. He look at the moon. He look at the prophet. And the prophet face was more white and shiny than the moon. Madness. They worship white color. Their God is white. Their prophet is white. And Islam is made for the white. And we showed you the proofs that Allah, he created the one who will go to heaven. They are white. If you remember before, we showed you where Muhammad, he promised the Muslim men they would have women, right? In the heaven. I know what happened to this website. Those women, they are called Hur. Do you know what Hur mean? The most time they say to you, Hur black, I mean black eye. That's false. Hur is coming from see through. See through. When a person is so white, you can see the veins under his skin. The more your skin is darker, you don't see that. So Muhammad, he promised them women who they are whore, which means they are extremely white. And if you don't believe me, here we go. It's in the front of you. This is the Muslim translation, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, the most authentic book after the Quran for the Muslims. They are so beautiful, pure. Do you see the word pure? Pure in what? Pure in the look. Transparent. You can see the marrow of the bones of their legs. Do you see it? Do you see it? Christian Prince refuse my call. You're a liar. Nobody call me. My Skype is open. And if you call me, people will hear the ring. I have zero call. Anyone now can call me and people will hear the ring of the caller. You're a liar. So, you know, like today I changed my topic. I was going to talk about women, but because of this. Uh, so let us make it uh, simple. The translation of the Bible using the word Allah, it's a false translation. The translation of the Bible in Indonesian, it's a false translation. You will you will find that the translation for the Bible in only, only in countries which is ruled by Muslims, they are using the word Allah. Did you ask yourself why? Do you understand what I'm saying? Which means this is not exist in the original Bible. It is a stupid translation. And translation can be done by you know done by people like the Muslim they say to you oh you have many version of the Bible those are translation you idiot this is not different Bible this is a translation I can translate a Bible now print it I can call it a, a translation of Christian Prince but doesn't mean that this is a new Bible it's translation it can be accurate it can be good it can be bad the same as you Muslim, you have translation of Yusuf Ali, Muhammad Biktal, etc., etc. And then you say to us, oh, we agree only with the Arabic Quran. Well, I agree only with the Hebrew and the Aramaic Bible and the Greek. Anything else is a translation. So you don't bring to me a translation to say, oh, Arab Christian in the Middle East, they are using the word Allah. They are under the occupation of Muslims for the last 1400 years. And who dare to say that Allah is not God there? Try it. In the Middle East, if you speak against a president or a prince, you and your family disappear. So imagine if you say that against a prophet like Muhammad, criminal, or Allah. Are you getting the point? So when they say that to you, 
Oh, so how come the Arab Christian they use the word Allah will tell them then how some Christian prince he says Allah is the devil I don't pray to Allah Allah is a pagan God if we are the Muslims okay the Muslim they say that Christians and Muslims they have the same God oh hold on here we go the hate in front of you a great example that you are speaking false Christians did Jesus promise us in heaven to have sex with females are we going to have who who we can see the marrow of their bones? No, Jesus said he and she they will be the same as angels Which mean in heaven there's no sex So if we have the same God at least we should have the same heaven The God of Islam not only it's a pagan God it's a collection of gods Muhammad is a false man he took some from Christianity, some from the Jews, some from the Hindus. Like when, when the Muslim, they wear the clothes of Hajj. Where is this from coming from? This is a Hindu. Go right now and check how the Hindu they dress. And how Muslims they dress. They shave their head. They cover one, they cover one shoulder, show the other shoulder, and they wear a sheet. There's no underwear. And their sandal is the same. It have to be from one piece of uh, leather, like you know, something like that. Like no, so this is Hindu, black stone, the Shiva stone. Muhammad they have it, the Hindu they have it. It is not something new. Going around the building, they have it. You have it. Ramadan is from the Sabian. Ashura, Muslim, even the Muslim, they say Ashura has been taken from the Jews, according to them. So what we find that Muhammad, he took things from everybody. Is my mic making noise? I think so. Sorry for that. How Muhammad even changed fasting? <laughs> Muhammad, he started fasting Ashura. Okay, what Ashura? Who wanted to ask what Ashura? And then Muhammad, he learned from the Sabi and about Ramadan. He switched to Ramadan. Imagine Muhammad, he said that if you fast the day of Ashura, that will forgive your sin for all the past year. So why Muslims don't fast it now? How it was so important, suddenly we replaced by Ramadan. If one day of fasting is equal to one year of sin, isn't it obvious that Muhammad the false prophet is a fraud trying to make you just follow him by fabricating lies what kind of God will forgive me for all the sin of the previous year for not eating for a few hours if this is the case everybody will go to heaven I I raped a woman yesterday I fast today I will go and do rape every day for the last 365 days, the last year, and then in the day of Ashura, I will fast, brother. I'm a good person now. And then Muhammad, suddenly, he dumped this day. He said, "Don't. it's not necessary to fast it. He replaced by Ramadan. So how it was, one day will forgive all the sin, and then the day became not important. Do you see it? Read carefully. It is the day of Ashura and you are eating, Abdul Rahman said to one of the companion. Upon this he said, fast was observed on this day before the fast in Ramadan was made obligatory. But when it was made at the fasting of the day of Ashura, and then we abandoned this day. How you abandoned this day? Because Muhammad is a fake man. 
he saw the people fast in Ashura. They are pagan like him. He says Ashura. Okay, he fast Ashura. In different hadith, Muhammad he came. He saw the Jews fasting a day. He said, "What is this day?" They said, "This is the day where Musa he crossed the sea." He said, "Well, if this is the day of Musa crossing the sea, we are more uh, like we have right in Musa more than you." So he started fasting that day. The same day, Ashura. So how it was so important to the point we forgive your sin and then Ashura was replaced by different fasting. What kind of God he changed his mind? Because Muhammad was trying to build a religion. He don't have one. The Christian they have fasting, the Jews have fasting, the Sabian have fasting, he have to have fasting. <laughs> Do you understand me guys? And then now we have zero Muslims calling us, zero Muslim even texting us. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? Any Muslim oppose? And don't forget that Muhammad he took many stories from Salman the Pharisee, Salman the Persian. If you have my book, you will find Muhammad is spending the night with Salman to the point Khadija, sorry, Aisha, she was jealous, and the wives they were jealous. Because Muhammad, he spent the night with him. What he was spent the night for? What? Learning stories from the Persian, and this is where he got the whore from. So the whore is version, who are from Persia. Musa is a Jew. Christ is for the Christians and the Jews. The black stone is for the Hindus. The Kaaba is for the Hindus. The Yemeni corner is for the Sabian, which is coming from the temple of al Makkah. This is why you see in the Quran, sometimes he call it Mecca, sometimes he call it Bakka. Bakka is the bend in the accent. The letter Ba can be used or can be, can be pronounced as Qa. The same as in Ka, with Mecca what is the first house is built for Allah it is the house of Bakka what is Bakka this is the temple of Yemen which is the temple of the Sabian which is the moon God you can go right now and search the temple of Yemen al Makkah Makkah this is where the name Makkah is originally from and Bakka is the same this is the first temple. This is why Muhammad he took. There's a there's a corner in the in the uh, in the Kaaba. It's called the Yemeni corner, and we showed you that Muhammad he said that whoever touched those corners, Allah forgive his sin. So why this? What this corner is about? This corner simply have stones from the original temple, like some Christians they bring bones of saints and they build. A church in the top of their grave it's a tradition Muhammad he wanted to have or the people before Muhammad they wanted to have something from the temple and so they don't need to go all the way to the temple of Yemen in the same time that will bring business so they built the Kaaba and they brought stones from the temple of the Sabian which is the temple of the moon God so if you uh, if you remember we showed you there's two corners if you touch them they forgive your sin which means it's not only the black stone the black stone is for the moon god but the yemeni corner it is it is a stones taken literally from the temple which is the temple of the sabian which is in yemen which is the moon god do you see it if you touch those two corners, which corners? 
the corner of the black stone and the corner of Yemen you can search right now as we speak to the temple of al Makkah. let me see if I can find it for you And by the way, all this, the scribe of Al Makkah temple proved that they were worshiping the lunar god in that temple. Let us see. I see the pictures already, but I want to see like something. Yeah, I don't see. I want to. I want to find an official, like something scientific, not just uh, people making articles. Uh, Anyway, I will show you the images before we show the article, but I don't see the, I want to like I don't want to get uh, uh, just uh, someone posting articles, you know. Anyway, if you if you go and search for Al Makka Temple, you will find this. This is Al Makka Temple, which is was the temple of the Sabian, built by the Sabian. This actually, many do not know that even the Egyptian gods are made by the Sabian. This is why the the Sabian they hate the Jews because they believe that the god of the Sabian, the god of the Jews, destroyed the army of the Pharaoh. And the army of the Pharaoh, they are Sabian. So uh, you can search and you will find a lot of information about the temple of Al Makkah. Uh, you see it? Do we have any question? Again, guys, today I suppose to give my book Quran and Science in Indonesian language for free, but uh, the, the person who will uh, read it did not finish yet. So I want you to give me just uh, maybe a week maximum from now, and then he finished reading, and then we will post it. So I keep my promise. I did not change my promise. You will have it, but just uh, we want to be sure that the book translated in at least okay, a good language. And there's nothing wrong in the translation and for sure I'm very thankful for the translator I do not know him I never met him I do not know his name but uh, because of that actually I wanted to check and be sure more because at the end of the day I mean I don't know how to read the book you know what I mean so the translator is the one who is saying what he is saying translating supposedly what I say so I want to be sure first that he is not making things which is not there you know so we will we will share the book all of you Indonesian people will have it for free as I promised and I want you after you have it share it like fire with everybody all right uh, soon when we have it ready to publish within a week from now we will have it done the book is done already but we are just asking some people to read it uh, to to see if there is any uh, mistakes and my trust on those people. Otherwise, I don't know how to read the Indonesian language. 
you know like you know all translation I, I always translation have a problem because you don't know how what is the ability of the translator right it might be very good as an example my book in a French I don't speak French but people who told me they read the book they said the one who translated the book is so good to the point that his book in French is better than my book in English <laughs> yeah so you know like uh, uh, English is not my first language you know that so when I write a book it's very difficult for me because I need help of people to check the grammar the mistakes etc it's not an easy process it take a lot of work a lot of time uh, for me I can make a book in Arabic you know if I say to you two two weeks I will not be exaggerating two weeks I can finish a book in Arabic about Islam because it's my language I do not need to check the grammar I do not need to translate which is a huge part of the work because just take the text as like now if I want to talk about this hadith so now what I will do I have to translate the hadith to English or to Basha language or to German and that will take a lot of time but if it's in Arabic and I'm making the book in Arabic that's it it's just copy the hadith paste it there and say what do you want to say about it done deal right yeah so anyway and as soon I get the other book in the in the Indonesian language too because somebody is working in it when it's finished I will give it to you for free too this is because I really love Indonesian people and I want to help them at the same time I understand that Indonesian people they are majority are poor so it's not fair from me just because I want to make some money even though I need it to hold the book from 200 300 million people just because I want to make little money and I know they can't even maybe afford it few of them maybe they can so for me giving the book for free is a blessing for all of us and that will share the truth with everyone especially this book is called Quran and science in depth which means Muslims are trying to convince you that Quran is full of science so this book will get all their science busted and you will die laughing at the comedy So do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Why Jesus Christ did not stop the slavery? That's false, Jamal. It is your God who did not. Jesus said clearly, if somebody asks you for your coat, give him your dress. Is that correct, guys? So if somebody he owns a slave, he asks him for his freedom, shall not he give him a freedom? Secondly, how many slaves Jesus he own? Isn't it Jesus is the best example for us? Christians, how many how many slaves Jesus have, and how many slaves Muhammad have? So your statement, Mr. Jamal, is a false statement. How come you don't ask yourself the same question? Because you are being hypocrite. Did you ask your prophet why he owned a slave? Jesus never owned one. I never killed one your prophet is a slave owner and he was raping them this is how somebody make a false statement isn't it the Quran says it's forbidden for you married women except except slaves which mean you can rape married women just because they are slaves Is that your book or my book? So this is the best you came with, Mr. Jamal? And all married women are forbidden into you, save these captives. Do you see it? So not only you own slaves, and Muhammad, he received gifts as a slave's gift. Amazon come in front of his house, drop some boxes. He opened the boxes. There's a human. And what he do with those human? He raped them. And Jamal is talking about slavery. This is your Quran. And this is your translation. And you got busted. This is why now, suddenly you are so quiet.
even in the Old Testament it says that if you have a slave if you have a slave you can sleep with her you have to marry her to marry her and why the Jews have slaves the whole Jews been taken as a slaves the Jews were practicing eye for an eye the whole nation been taken as slaves by the Aram by the Aramaic by the by the, sorry the Assyrian and by the Egyptian twice the whole nation not a few hundreds all the Jews been taken like goats to Egypt and to Iraq they cannot block my book in Indonesia my friend because it's going to be filed in the internet how they can block it let them try <laughs> They can block a website posting the book, right? Post it in Google, G Drive everywhere. Oh, they can block that. Good luck. Let them try. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? And actually, you know, uh, uh, if the Lord give me more time, I will be. Uh, able to finish the Quran translation and I'm working on other two more books It's taking so long, but as you see, I mean I spend a lot of time here with you uh, Yesterday I uh, I start the process of publishing the German book sex and Allah So it's going to be soon maybe in maybe in three days four days It's going to be out and then we are going to have the Dutch translation of sex and Allah too in the Dutch language so in, the, in, the, in this before the end of the month we will have four books published in two languages the Dutch and the German for sex and Allah how many of you did read sex and Allah it's a very beautiful book and there's a lot of secrets you never heard of and the reason I don't talk about it here I mean it's very complicated topic and the reference need like really hard translation and it's dirty That's why it's called sex and Allah. You know, people they say to me, "Why you call it sex and Allah?" I mean, don't you think it's a harsh? What it's about sex and Allah? What is it about? <laughs> I mean, why you need to call it something else? Why you need to call to sugarcoat things? Sex and Allah. It's about Allah and sex. All of Islam is about sex. Why somebody want to do jihad to get the slave in the earth, rape them, capture women? So rape now and rape later. The the version who Allah will give them to the Muslims, who are they? They are they are made for sex. It's a slavery. Slavery in earth, slavery in heaven. When Muhammad he promised every Muslim eighty thousand little boy slave, and they are white like pearls. Hmm? Let me see if I can find the hadith. Here we go. Do you see it? Muhammad said, at least of the paradise in the position, the, the, here what he's saying, the lowest reward, the bad reward, the bad, the bad Muslim, the, the one who will enter heaven at, at the end. The list of the people of paradise in position is the one with 80,000 little boys those servants are described in the Quran as boys and 72 wives so mistakenly people think that Muslim will have 72 wives no 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 this is for the bad 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 Muslim the, the one at the end you see Islam says that the heaven have 100 ranks so there's one in the top and one at the end this guy he is at the end he is the worst Muslim he will get 80,000 little boys and 72 women. So 72 is not for every Muslim, it's for the bad Muslim. Otherwise, the number will be by hundreds of thousands, or if not millions. And this is nothing but a form of a slavery. So we have Jamal is asking about slavery, but even in heaven of Allah, there's a slavery. What kind of God will enslave children to make me happy? 80,000 little boys, they will be enslaved to make one person happy? 
and how you can be happy by having 80,000 little boys slave and 72 women they don't know them they are made for sex hmm? and this is additional proof that Islam cannot be from the same God the same the God of Islam have no ethic this is this is ethical problem what kind of ethic this ethic is the God of the Bible is holy his house is not a, a pimp house Allah his house is a pimp house everybody is naked having boom boom and not naked having boom boom with one, with one woman he love her no there's no love here it's a lust the man living the fantasies of having many women fighting over him there's a sheikh Saudi Sheikh, he was describing for the Muslims how the women they will jump on you the second you enter the heaven. One she will be sucking your lips, one will be sucking your uh, you know, I mean, very filthy. They will be fighting over you. You will be in the floor, and and hundreds of women they are they are zombie. I mean, is is that really fun? And each time you finish doing boom boom with one of them, you don't finish actually. The angel will come to you and he will say, Hey, she's smoking. You know, her private part is smoking. Change it. This is heaven. If you want to read more about this madness, you can read my book, Sex and Allah, and you will see. And I change it in Muslim to say I'm lying. All the reference is there in Arabic and for sure in English. Well, sorry to, uh, for too graphic, but I mean, we cannot sugarcoat this cult. You see, this is the problem when I go to a church to do a seminar. The minister of the church, he stand and he start to explain to those people that this is different. You know, like, okay, he, he's, he's going to say to them, here you will hear words you are not used to hear in a church. So he go to the stage and he starts saying, he's trying to explain, preparing them for the shocking moment. So I say, okay, just, don't do that. Did it happen? Each time I go to a church to do a seminar, the minister of the church, they are afraid. How people will respond to the teaching they will hear. In fact, each time I go, they ask me to come again. And not only that, they close the door. They don't let me go, mostly. Especially like I went to Asia and the Philippines. Once I missed the airplane, they don't want to let me go. I suppose I will finish by noon time, 11 o'clock, and go. An airplane, I think it was like one. They closed the doors. They said, You don't go. Because tomorrow we have more people coming. And look, the people don't want you to go. Because, you know, it's funny and stupid and hilarious at the same time, not only ugly. I cannot explain to you how many times people, they, 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 you know, like when I was doing seminars in the Philippines, people, they sweat. It's it's a very humid, you know, country. It's hot there. So they laugh and laugh. There's a guy, almost he have a heart attack from laughing. Actually, once uh, we have a seminar, and uh, I was saying to them that the prophet said that every one of us we will be, uh, we will look in the heaven of Allah like Prophet Joseph. If you remember the Quran, uh, speak about that when women they see Joseph, they cut their fingers with the knives. This is how. Sexy he is. <laughs> so Muhammad, he promised the Muslims that when you go to heaven, you men, you will be so good looking, sexy, like Prophet Joseph. And Prophet Joseph is a prophet which every woman in the world she dreamed to sleep with. That's what the Quran is saying, not me. Even, even the ruler or those who they are leadership in Egypt, their wives, 
They want to sleep with Joseph. I mean, right now, if you ask yourself, what is your wife? She might be with Joseph. <laughs> oh, boy. So anyway, I was saying that all of you, you will be so good looking, and I showed him the hadith. And one of the viewer, his name is Joseph. God bless him. You know, but he have a very funny, uh, let us say, uh, uh, he's, he's, you know, he, he, he stand up, he says, like me, he's, he's making fun of himself. He's, he, he, he look funny. I mean, he have a, he's a bro his, his teeth is gone, broken. So he stand, he said, like me. <laughs> and people die from laughing. He said, my name is Joseph, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy if you go in the Quran actually let's see um, let us go to the verse in the Quran I don't know what happened to the website. It's frozen. I have to wait. Maybe we need to open a different website. <clears throat> anyway, madness. Let me try to open the phone website. Hold on. Or maybe I need to close and refresh. Not responding. Try a different one. All right. Here we go. Chapter 12, verse number 13. The women, my friend, when they see Joseph, they go crazy. They cannot hold themselves. Joseph was... Uh, uh, what they call like what? What is a famous? Uh, uh, <laughs> and the, when the women in the city say is the ruler, wife asking for her slave boy, indeed, indeed he has submerged in her to the heart. Okay, and then, if, and if you read the, the, the hadith and the trust and the interpretation to this. When they see Joseph, my friend, they cut their hands. They cut their hands, literally. The women, when they see, they cut their hands. Women, when they see, they cannot. They start shaking. This is true, brother. Joseph is here. Joseph is here. Women, they are doing, making, uh, making food. They cut their hands. Because the second Joseph, he entered a place, everybody go not. He's so good. He's so handsome. He's so sexy. Do you see it? So Muhammad, he promised them that all of them, when they go to heaven, they will be in the, they will have the look of Joseph and the age of Jesus, which is 33. Let us see if we can find you the hadith for that one. I guess we can find it in English. Let us see. Um,
Hmm, let's see. But uh, by the way, Muhammad is more handsome than Joseph. I need to find those hadith. The problem with this search engine in this website is very, very bad. It will take forever to find. Anyway, next time maybe remind me. I will. I will get it for you. Uh, uh, I hate to mention something without showing it. Let us see. Let us see here. Here it says that Adam he will be sixty arms tall, or you will be you will be sixty arm tall. But I need the one where it says how tall are you, and how you will look like. Um, sixty arm tall. All of those hadith about you will be sixty arm tall. But I want the one where it says that they will be in the age of Jesus and the look of Yusuf or Joseph. I cannot find it. Maybe it's not in this website. But for sure we can find it in Arabic. And yeah, by the way, uh, Joseph, he have a very beautiful voice too. But uh, but the one who will be invited to the party of Allah is going to be uh, 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 David and uh, Allah and Muhammad. Jesus is not invited. He will not be singing. Let us see. You see, I found the hadith in Arabic, but I cannot find it in English. Let us try again. Yeah, we cannot find it here. But the hadith is in front of me in Arabic, actually. It says here, يدخل أهل الجنة على طول آدم عليه السلام ستون ذراعا بذراع الملك على حسن, على حسن يوسف وعلى ميلاد عيسى ثلاث وثلاثون سنة so the people of the heaven, they will enter heaven and they will be in the height of Adam, 60 arms. And uh, uh, 60 arms from the arms of the angel, which means really, I don't know how, how that will be, how big the angel arm is. And then they will be in the face and the beauty of Joseph. And they will be in the age of Jesus, 33 years old. And they will have the tongue like the tongue of the prophet Muhammad. And they will be Jordan Murdun Mukhalun. So they will be they will have no hair, no eyebrows. Let us see if we can find this one here about Jordan Murdun. They will be totally without hair. And I don't know how ugly that is will be.
yeah I found this one here but it's not all the hadith we want the people of paradise are without body hair murd that's what murd mean murd is coming from the married the genie who have no hair and with kuhl in their eyelid so they, they have they have no hair instead of that they have uh, eyeliner you know and like their eyebrows will be drawn by pen like makeup and their uh, and the, their youth will never come into an end and their clothes will never wear out this is what muslim is fighting for and dying for all right anyway guys i think we have uh, we have muhammad qasim saying christian prince is a deceiver muhammad qasim why you don't call me how many times you did call me muhammad qasim and you got busted be honest once twice three times four times five times six times how many times what about we added one more time what do you think guys we are desperately waiting for a Muslim to call us and prove to us that the Christian Prince is deceiver. Why you don't do it? You don't want to be uh, recorded again and people laugh at what you say? Do it. People will take the video and they will post it everywhere and they will see how Muhammad Qasim, he got the Christian Prince busted. Do you have the courage? Now he'll play dead. Even though I was planning to go and say goodbye, guys, but I'm willing to stay just for the sake of Mr. Muhammad Qasim to get me busted. How about that? Honestly, I'm leaving. But if Muhammad Qasim is willing to call me, I will stay for the coming two hours. Two hours, just for you. Do you dare? Hmm, he's playing dead now. <laughs> All of you Muslims are welcome to call me. And you know you don't call for a reason. You know that you cannot make it. You are following a crazy religion, crazy cult, and you have no answer. The only thing you can say, Christian Prince, is lying. What line? I'm showing you in the screen. Guys, did I say anything I did not show in the screen? Actually, I'm struggling. This is why it's taking me more time just to show what I am saying. I say, if I don't, if I say something, I don't show it. I feel guilty if I don't show it. Anything I say, I show it in the screen. You are busy for the coming few days, and he put for me bombs. <laughs> okay, now we know what are you doing. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much for being here. I hope today we answer many of your questions. And uh, don't make people fool you. Islam is not only the moon religion cult, Islam is a collection of many religions. Muhammad, he took from here, from there, from everywhere. Veganism, Christianity, Judaism, Sabian, Hindu, stones worshipping, stones kissing, going around the Kaaba, the same as the Hindu, the sexual stone, uh, fictions, superstitions, all of those is Islam. Like when Muhammad he says the black dog is the devil, is that God? Just because he's a black dog? He is the devil. Who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? Who in the world want to believe that because a dog is a black, he is devil? Superstitions. Just because he is a black, so now we have to hate the black dog. And actually, I find this dog is very fishy. He is the devil just because he's black. Why? How is that? Based in which knowledge is that? And look at this dog. He's like and asking Allah, Allah, why? Allah, why? Why you made the Mujahideen go after me? He's a cute dog. Look at this dog. Allah, please. Oh, oh, oh. This is the this is the devil. 
This guy is the devil. So our problem, all of it is coming from a black dog. And that is God. And this is God teaching. And now the dog is asking Allah for, please Allah, please let me leave me alone. I will change my color hair, my hair color. I will make it blonde. Why? What's what's wrong with the blonde? No, a blonde dog is fine. Black dog is the bad one. So when we speak about Islam, we are not talking about really a religion. We are talking about a mix of stupidity and cults. Muhammad he brought all cults, and he took from other religions, and he mixed them, and he called it Islam, which means surrender or die. I said, oh, Abu Dhar, what teacher there is in the black dog, which distinguishes it from the red dog and the yellow dog? He said, oh, my son, the son of my brother, I ask measure of Allah as you asked me. He said, the black dog is the devil. That is Islam. It's a stupid racist cult. And this cult is a mix of many cults and many religions. Starting from the moon worship, moon god worship, to the sun worship, to Christianity, to Judaism, to Hinduism, to the Sabian, to, uh, you name it. Mixed with millions of stories of superstitions and fiction stories like the sunset and murky waters, the Qurnayn, the flying carpet who can carry 600,000 chairs, the ring of Solomon, Solomon wife sleeping with the devil. I mean, that is Islam. And we have to admit that major stupid stories in Islam is coming from the Talmud, from the Jews' books. Muhammad was a fool. He took what is written in the books of those fabricators and he took it for a granted. Many of those stories. I'm not talking about this story now in front of me. I'm talking about other superstition stories and fiction stories. Like Suleiman, the ring of Suleiman, blah, blah, blah. Suleiman is speaking to the ant, the ant she loved. The Suleiman he loved, the ant she said to the ant, uh, Suleiman will crush you. Those are stories, Muhammad, he took them from the Jews. They fool him. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for uh, uh, being here. Uh, I will try to be live on air tomorrow. If not, the day after. Don't forget to subscribe, please. Uh, so always you will be updated and turn on your notification. And uh, uh, for those who do not know, I have another channel which is called the Quality of Life. Later I will text in the in the chat there, uh, so you can see uh, the other account and you can subscribe. In the other account, we talk about things have nothing to do with religion. Uh, things you know have to do with our life normal stuff. It's like uh, you know social uh, uh, Social and good talk about what is useful for us, but taking a break from the cult and The garbage All right, so I want to say thank you may the Lord bless you and I hope to see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and we prove it every day Thank you